Welcome back. I want to explain today what backpropagation is. So backpropagation is a technique to compute the gradient of a function. And we use it typically to compute gradients of nested and potentially complex functions. It's a technique which is around since the 1960s and is a special case of automatic differentiation. It's very frequently used in the context of neural networks in order to train a neural network. That means in order to estimate the parameters that we need to set inside a neural network so that it does the learning task or solve the learning task that we actually wanted the network to perform. So if you need the gradient of a loss function, for example, backpropagation is the technique to compute that gradient. And what it basically does, it decomposes a function um, into smaller function using something which is called a computational graph and um, basically stores local variables in that graph and applies the chain rule in a reverse manner in order to um, compute the gradient of a function. So the key ingredients are actually not very complex, but we can use it actually to uh, compute the gradients of pretty nasty nested functions. So first let's start with what's a computational graph. A computational graph is a graph where in every node we store a mathematical operation, like adding up two values. So here we have two incoming edges for that node, x and y. We compute the sum of x and y, f equals um, x plus y, and this is kind of the output. So this is a small operation. And um, with these computational graphs, we can actually specify more complex functions. So another example, we have here the function f, which depends on three variables, x, y, and z. And we want to compute, um, we can compute a function value given by f plus y and the result multiplied with that square. Um, this is a function for which we may want to compute evaluate a function and compute the gradient. And um, we use two things here, so-called forward pass and the backward pass. So the forward pass is used to evaluate the function for a given x, y, z location. So we can put in x, y, z values over here, propagate this information through the graph, always executing the mathematical operations in the nodes, and then we get out that function value. So that's the forward pass. We are storing those red numbers as local variables in that graph because we will need it later on in the so-called backward pass. And the backward pass is used to compute the gradient for the position for that we have computed the forward pass, or so our linearization point. And what the backward pass does, it basically moves this information backward through the pass and for every node only needs to compute the local um, partial derivative that the local function um, or that the node actually represents. So we are computing the um, partial derivatives of the function stored in every node with respect to its incoming edges. And as those functions are very simple, we can typically specify them quite easily. And so in the backwards pass, we are using the information of the local variables we have stored before and the information of the first derivatives and can propagate this information backwards. So if we are again end up at the left-hand side, we actually get the gradient for that specific location. And that what actually happens inside backpropagation um, when you, for example, learn the parameters of a neural network. If you want to dive a little bit deeper, let's inspect a single node and see how a single node actually looks like and how it is computed. So consider we have the node f equals a times b, so a function which is just the product of two values. And consider that it's somewhere in our computational graph and we already have some derivative information which is here um, coming from the right hand side, dl with, derived with respect to df is some value d that we already know. And what we need to do for that node is simply we need to compute the first derivative of the function f with respect to a and b. And this is b and a, just because it's a simple product of two values. And so what we are then doing in this node, we are actually sp splitting up the derivative which comes from the right hand side into the partial derivatives computed with respect to a and b by simply applying the basic chain rule, nothing else than that. So we are applying the basic chain rule and we are filling the values for a and b with the values we have already stored in that graph as those local information. And then we kind of propagate this information backwards until we reach the input edges of this computational graph and then we have computed the gradient at that location. So neural networks for example, can be seen as such computational graphs. And you can see this if you look to a single neuron and you can actually write down um, the function that is represented by a single neuron here, for example, with a sigmoid activation function. And you can write down the computational graph. And this means you can actually chain a lot of neurons and this will also be a computational graph. So um, 
but I can actually use this idea in order to compute the gradient of a loss function computed through a neural network, and that's uh, one application area where backpropagation is very frequently used. It's not used only there, it's also used for other machine learning problems. Um, so whenever gradients of potentially nested and complex functions are used, such as in gradient descent or things, techniques like this, typically back propagation is used to do that. I hope that was useful and gave you an idea what happens under the hood when you train a neural network. So thank you for your attention.